Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. This video is about the new 2 servo MH32 wing. Why this airfoil? Printing. Building. And how it flies. Powered. Slope. Or bungee launch. I like it, maybe you will too. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And check out our website for this model and others, as well as printing configurations for different materials. This new wing is available separately in the catalog under Wing Sets, or can be selected when ordering a complete airframe. All of the wings are interchangeable so you can adjust for conditions or just try something new. More airfoils and designs are on the way. The MH32 is an airfoil used in F3B competition in the 90s and was known as a high lift airfoil compared to the RG15. Slower than the RG15, but good fun on light lift days and better suited for powered flight and higher bungee launches. The Soarcraft 4 Servo MH32 has been available for a while, but many have asked for a 2 servo version, so here it is. The 2 servo wing is easier to program and can be built lighter with two less servos. Like the 4 servo version, the 2 servo wing uses the 7mm spar. Nice and stiff and available from several suppliers. I will post the needed carbon and these links in the description below. This wing has the additional wingtip carbon supports like the 4 servo version. It's not necessary, but can add some robustness for wing tip strikes or cartwheels through the bushes. And the wing control surfaces were extended up to the fuselage to make them even more effective. In the file set, there's a building guide for the wing. It has a chart for what parts to print and additional parts that are needed. The chart is based on a basic starting point for reference, using regular PLA weights and a bed slinger printer, and the original one-piece wing build. I'm going to deviate from the instructions using my Bamboo X1C to print the Bamboo Aero Foaming Lightweight PLA and Orca Slicer. So the time and weight will be different from the chart, and I'm going to build it as a two-piece wing, not as torsionally stiff as a one-piece wing, but easier to pack. You still need all the parts listed, so the instructions are still a good reference. Now for slicing and printing. I added a 3MF file to the slicing config files. It should open in Bamboo or Orca Slicer with the test part. It will also have the filament and process settings for an XC1 or P1S. And you can use this to transfer the settings to the printer of your choice. For foaming materials, I use nearest for fins and wings and back for fuselage parts. You can load all of the parts into this project and get them ready to print. Slice and print all of the parts and print them separately for best results with the foaming materials. Here are all the printed parts and the hardware for the wing. I like to add paint before I do anything else. Flat spray paint seems to work well. I tape mask the edges and paint the black first. These colors are from Home Depot and I use two to three light coats. Because I'm doing a two-piece wing, I'm going to work on one side at a time. And I will be cutting the front CS4 spar in half. Mark the center of the main spar and cut the CS4 and the aileron supports to the right length. 
This is how everything lines up on one wing half. Test the carbon in each of the channels. File as necessary to get the desired fit. The main spar CS1 should be a slip fit in each panel. I found a scraper works well for cleaning up surfaces and a drill bit for the wing bolt holes. Check the fit between all of the wing panels. I like to put the inner three panels on the CS4 spar and mark the length that would stick into the tip panel as reference for how far it should be in for gluing. Then with all the wing panels on the three carbon pieces and a gap between each, you can stand it on its tip and make sure that your mark is just below the surface on the front carbon and the aileron carbon reaches to the edge of the control surface. Using thin CA, add a couple drops of glue to the aileron carbon, add a couple of drops to the front carbon, but do not glue the center carbon. You can even spin it to make sure it is still free. Then push the panels together so there is no gap. Repeat for each of the panels. I also like to use binder clips to align the trailing edge. Once you are done gluing all four wing panels to the aileron and front carbon, remove the main spar. Finish gluing the skin seams between each panel. Just a little bead of CA is all that's needed. Do the full length and both sides. And be careful not to glue yourself to the plane. I've done it several times. Then set it aside to dry and build the other wing half the same way. I use a silicone reinforced hinge line on these ailerons. It's simple and easy, but durable and flexible, and have been tested to over 100 miles an hour. With the lightweight PLA, I've been using this clear exterior grade silicone. It's capable of 300% elongation and is easy to bend. One tube is good for many planes, but don't use past its expiration date or it likely will not dry. Let's get the wing ready. The aileron on the wing sections needs to be freed up on both ends. Clean up the end gaps of any loose material. Score the hinge line with a file. And start bending back and forth. Bend a little, file a little, bend some more, file some more. Until you get the feel of the hinge line that you want. All the way up and all the way down. Moves pretty easy. Now it's ready for some silicone. Have a paper towel handy. Open the hinge and apply a thin bead of silicone to the hinge line. I use my pinky finger to wipe off the excess. I do the bottom side first out of habit, not sure if there's a right or wrong way. Flip it over and do another thin layer. Once dry, this encapsulates the hinge line making it quite sturdy, but flexible enough for full movement. Let it dry for about an hour and then flex it back and forth to ensure a smooth movement. With the hinges ready, we can move on to servos and push rods. For this build, I'm adding the aileron servo after gluing. Straighten the wire and push it through the pass-through. With some backlight, you can see where the end is. Spin the wire to get it to the next section. You can also use a piece of carbon strip or stiff wire to fish the wire through.
till the connector is in the opening. Then the servo should drop into the pocket. Connect the servo to the radio, add the control arm, and check the full motion for clearance. Don't forget to add the control arm retaining screw. I then use hot glue to tack the servo in place. Little dabs here and there, not big puddles. Next, I'm drilling out the control arm to the .045 pushrod wire size I'm using for the ailerons. A Z-bin added to one end of the wire. And an easy connector on the other end. Add the retainer. Press it on with some pliers. Add the screw. Then you can flip on the radio and adjust for the perfect neutral position for the aileron. Cut off the excess wire. You can also clip the excess off the control arm at this time. I use hot melt to attach the servo covers. Check the fit. Mark the edges. I add a bead around the servo and out to the edge of the cover. Drop the cover on and press in place. I also add a screw in opposite corners just to be sure. This side is ready. Do the same to the other side. Now you can mount the wing on whichever fuselage design you want. Check the CG balance point. There's a bump at the CG point on the bottom of the wing root. The balance point for this MH32 is nearly identical to the RG15 wing, so switching wings in the field should be even easier. Connect up your radio gear and do some programming, and you're just about ready to go. Time to check the weather, charge the batteries, and grab the bungee launcher, and do some flying. <laughs> All right, everything is programmed, charged, and ready to go. Final check of everything. And away it goes. Great climb rate. Zips around nicely. Test landing approach. Seems like about 20 to 25 degree flaps is the right amount for this MH32 two servo wing. That was fun. Now let's try it on the slope. It just flies right out of my hand. The wind was pretty soft on this day, but this wing had no trouble staying in the air.
little flaps on landing and it slows down really nice. That was fun. Then on a completely windless day in the park with the bungee launch. That was enough fun, let's try it again. Whether it's bungee launch, powered flight, or slope soaring, I like this new wing. I hope you do too. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.